Um, but overall, we are 17% change versus last year. Um, we are pulling in a little bit. We have a little less activity, certainly, with uh, getting that sewer sale done on the legal side um, and other matters. On uh, the next page of the Treasurer's Report, we do have a year-to-date expenditures as a percentage of year-to-date revenue. This just shows you the percentage um, of that revenue, where it is going for the services in West Vincent. We have our balance summary sheet of our, all of our various funds. That comes to $10,916,632.90. And on the last sheet, you can review a budget to actual summary by each fund. Um, and just to uh, kind of point out here, uh, things are tracking fine. The capital fund, we're, we're looking at how, when those expenses are going to be coming in more substantially once we have our contracts underway for uh, the paving and that sort of thing. So that's really going to, um, to catch up to what we have projected for the year um, in the summer and fall months. Uh, the open space is on track. We are at EIT, still watching very closely. Uh, liquid fuels is right on and sewer. Hopefully we'll have a, a new longer sewer fund uh, maybe next year. But we still have the Port of Chester Springs uh, receipts coming in for that and some minor expenditures. So with that, that is how we're performing for April and for the year thus far. Any comments for John? Come on up. Yeah. That's several comments. First off, the uh, April, if you take March year to date and add April activity, you don't get April year to date. You're off by $10,000, which I think is fairly significant. Uh, it hasn't happened for a few months, but it shouldn't get back in there. Uh, another comment I would have on this, this last page, mm -hmm. there should be net income or loss for all the sections. You have it on the general fund, but none of the other sections, and it sort of seems like it's just relevant for everything. Um, another comment I noticed from the audit, um, they separate capital projects and road capital expenditures, road expenditures. Uh, if they separated the audit and if that's going to be the way it's going to be, there should be two funds here. Uh, I would say, it seems like that'd be good. In other words, this capital fund comprises two funds, one capital project and separately, with a number of a million four, and the other part is five million something. And if you're gonna separate them, I guess we should track them. Um, and then another comment I would have, in the capital fund, which doesn't show up here, in revenue, there's an in-transfer of funds. 8,000, where it's in from where? I can't find it going out of anywhere, and so if you transfer it in, you've got to transfer it out somewhere. Uh, any, and then, for some unknown reason to me, there's an expense of an equal amount. Uh, it just seems, I don't see any rationale in it. Anybody knows. I can address just a few things. Thank you, John. I always appreciate that. Um, the first issue of the $10,000 is something we're working on with the bank. We had, uh, I think, a duplicate um, posting of interest. Uh, something didn't reconcile properly, so we're addressing that right now um, and taking a look at that. The um, audit in terms of separating the road and capital, I'll take a look at that um, in terms of also the I would say the categorization was classified with DCED for capitals different than infrastructure improvements that come under capital, which are road, bridges, this sort of thing. Um, paving and having an asset is going to uh, require you to put it on the capital asset schedule. But for the purposes of the township's uh, road improvement program and plan, we're investing capital dollars into major infrastructure, which qualifies for just taking care of these very important projects. But I can look at that. Um, as far as the capital fund and having that net income and really what the transfer is, 
The transfer is the money that needs to offset the expenses for the capital in that account. So it's a way for us to track that. So just to add some comments to it. Did that explain anything? The, I actually, you say it just income to offset expenses, but it says in transfer. In transfer. Right. Is it transferred in from somewhere? Yes. Or from where? Play it. With, where from are, a checking account. To me, that's a or money mark, whatever that's right, whatever right. that name means. I don't right. know. But if you is it transferring in money that's in the capital account? We're paying it's not in any yeah. other account, correct? We're paying the expense and it's funded through the Pliget account. The Pliget Capital mm -hmm. account. Okay. <laughs> we can have another conversation about that. that's fine. Okay, yeah, we could. I mean, I, for everybody, I usually send uh, Eric an email with all these questions, and so she can be ready or not. That's fine. Uh, and the the, the ten thousand dollars, from what I determined, wasn't related to interest at all. Uh, I'll send you exactly what accounts it is, and uh, because there's five thousand income, five thousand in expense. And there's certain lines that are. Well, that's that fine. Are. I'm working on it with the treasurer. I am. Any other comments? Brian. What? You mentioned that the um, the capital fund, you're staging. You know when you're expecting to go and be you know, having some big lumps of money coming mm -hmm. up. Is it possible to go and like put that amount into I'm going to say whatever the municipal equivalent of a certificate deposit would potentially higher interest that pays off or finishes off and when you're staged that you're going to need the additional money? Rather than the certificate of deposit, we have uh, plicket accounts that are specifically uh, reviewed for that in the higher interest rates that we can look at that money and also earn a uh, good investment on that. So we did do that through plicket. Now, is that as a big lump or is stage smaller lumps? Uh, we have about half of the $4 million, correct? Okay, yeah. Shells in the bed. Yeah. yeah, that we have set aside because we had a significant budget this year to do projects. So, okay. yes, we are looking at that. Okay, or thank you. That. Thanks. Any other comments? <clears throat> Move on. Manager's report. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Wait, well, let's go back. Um, so those improvements or whatever, they're going to follow up into the next meeting and be explained? Sure. Yeah, of course. Well, I think that's important. Sure. <clears throat> okay. Um, the Phoenixville Regional Planning Committee, as I know I've reported about updating uh, their plan, they're looking at actually adding a six-member municipality, which is West Pikeland Township. Uh, they, uh, the committee had met, um, I know that uh, we're now to expect potentially a letter from West Pikeland Township to see if uh, they would, uh, the member municipalities would be okay with uh, including West Pikeland into that plan. Now what that would mean is the comprehensive plan uh, would need to be updated and there could be some additional money to do so, uh, so we'll report back on that. Uh, the local fire companies our uh, Chester County Emergency Response uh, Team are going to be doing tactical training at the Brent Coed um, Houses and the Cow Palace there. It's kind of an interesting opportunity for them to do some training at a site that will uh, be demolished so we, the buildings that they're going to be operating in um, serve as a nice place for them to do that. So if you see any activity, just know that's, that's for training purposes. And they are going to be insured. Yes, right? yes. yes. Um, I attended an annual conference of the Association for uh, Pennsylvania Municipal Management on May 15th uh, as the state affiliate to ICMA, the International City and County Manager Association. Uh, lots of managers there, lots of good networking. Uh, the second annual festival in the park is scheduled for this Saturday, June 8th. It's 1 to 5 p.m. There's also a 5K um, uh, run and walk. 
um, that will be in the morning at 8 a.m. to kick off the day. <clears throat> and uh, if there's any other volunteers that would like to come out and help, please contact myself or Maria or who, who, uh, whoever's on that committee, the food committee. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Summer Music Series kicks off Thursday, June 20th at 6.30 p.m. So Mystique will start out, uh, and that'll be at the Evans Park Gazebo, and that's on the third Thursday of the month in June, July, and August. Uh, you just bring a packed meal and a uh, chair blanket. The Lowy's Corner Horseshoe Association is doing a country carnival at the Horseshoe Grounds June 4th through June 8th. Uh, this will be like a public carnival ride um, and food and uh, games and I think a beer tent or beer garden, music and other vendors uh, to uh, support the Warshow Association. So it's going to be very busy this weekend. Uh, the French Creek Iron Tour is Sunday, June 9th. Bicyclists will be out and about, so uh, please be vigilant on that. The Parks and Recreation Commission is seeking volunteers to help serve as trail ambassadors uh, in clear trails at Print Coed. Um, I am working on the requirements, but if you are interested in advance, I'd be happy to have your name and contact information. Chester County Preservation Network will be having their Towns Tours and Village Walks program at Lowy's Corner Thursday, June 20th. Uh, <clears throat> West Vincent Township local historians will tell the story of Jacob Ludwig and his share of the 17.5 mile Little Conestoga Pike Road Adventure and many unique historical facts. Uh, the tour is free of charge and you meet at St. Andrew's uh, Lane for the beginning of the walkless tour and there's a driving map for further exploration. At the um, church. At the church. Church, thank church. you. And uh, the, that will be 5.30 to 7 p.m. The township welcomes our new part-time police officer, Melanie Faddis. Uh, she was sworn in this morning, so we're happy to have her on board. Uh, the Building and Zoning Department, we had 30 permit applications processed in May, so that's an increase from the last few months. Um, our Finance Department, I had reported our, on our budget report and treasurer's report. In the Public Works Department, uh, regular vehicle facility road maintenance, uh, lots of mowing, ditching, grading roads, and we're preparing for our road paving. Um, the crew rolled Janie Lane, Hilltop Road, Sawmill Road, Davis Lane, and Burlette School Road. We have our pre-construction meeting coming up for a chip sailing up township roads. The paving bids are due June 10th. We have survey work now done on Buttonwood Lane Bridge. I need to figure out how we get some uh, rights and access to get that bridge replaced. And we also have J.D. Lane, which I'm progressing with Pat Pico on uh, the movement of utility pole there. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Erica? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item. A thank you note for two of our officers, Sergeant Russell and, and Officer Fritz. What were they actually doing? There was a buyer station 5K. And they were, uh, the fire station HOA asked for support to um, help with the app. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll pass along this letter to them. Sure. Okay. Next, if I'm doing this correctly, tell me if I'm wrong, Mike. We're on the uh, <laughs> presentation of the 2019 uh, audit from Barbara King Thornton and Company. Who do we have to adjust that? Oh, Steve. <coughs> That's a blast. 2018. What's that? 2018. It's a 2018. Yeah. <coughs> Steve Kuflasis is here from Barbara Keen Fortnite Company, who conducted the township audit. Steve, if you don't mind giving an overview? Sure. Thank you. All right. All right. My name is Steve Kuflasis from uh, Barbara Keen Fortnite Company. I'm a partner the firm, and I am responsible for overseeing the audit of the township. Um, we were engaged by the township to audit their financial statements as of the year ended, December 31st, 2018. The township actually issues two types of reports. The first one is a regulatory report that gets submitted to DCD. It's in a prescribed form that's due April 1st, and that was submitted to the very end of March, mid end of March. And the second one is um, our, our base statements, and this, these are statements that show have to include the footnotes and are more of a, you know, in a format of what you're used to seeing when it comes to financial statements. Um, the township does report under the cash basis of accounting, basically means the revenue you see in the report is what was came in in cash and the expenses are what they paid versus 
where sometimes you do the accrual basis where you recognize revenue when it's earned and expenses when it's they're incurred. So that's the difference there. Um, the objective of our audit was to obtain reasonable assurance that they are fairly presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, based on our audit, we felt they were free of material misstatements, so we gave you an unmodified opinion, which basically means a clean opinion in accordance with the cash basis of accounting. Okay. Um, some things I wanted to point out this year. Um, at the end of the year, across all the township's funds, they ended with a fund balance of about $9.6 million, and that's your general fund, your capital projects funds, and then the residual that's left in the store fund. And that's an increase of about $3.6 million from the previous year. Uh, included in that is this year you sold your store assets for about $4 million, and then there were some significant capital projects that occurred this past year that offset you know, those proceeds. So I'll um, point that out there. Um, as Eric mentioned before, this year there were, um, in the audit, two new capital projects funds that were that, that are shown. One is the road improvement fund, and one is the, uh, which is basically account for resources set aside for the township's future road improvement projects. And the second one is the general capital projects fund, which is being set, with funds are being set aside for future you know, capital projects. So those are um, new this year. Um, as part of the audit, we did review the township's internal controls over financial reporting for the purpose of planning our audit approach, but not for giving an opinion on internal controls. Based on that review of internal controls, we felt that the controls in place are working as intended and they would catch a material statement when we're presented, so we didn't have any concerns in that area. Um, and management was very uh, easy to work with as, as of the past. Um, from an audit standpoint, we did not make very uh, many adjustments at all. The township does utilize another CPA that comes in year end and helps the year end close, which really you know, helps the audit move along uh, fairly smooth. Any comments from the audience? <laughs> I have a comment here. Um, <laughs> the, the one issue here that, that is in, of interest to me is the general fund shows a loss of $556,000, some huge number, which is the biggest general fund loss probably in the history of the township. Yeah. Do you, would you notice that and address that with the township at all? Well, if I, if I recall correctly, in past years they were set aside funds for, for, for capital projects. They were kind of earmarked them internally. This year, the funds were actually moved out of the general fund into the capital projects funds, which caused the, de the decrease this year you're seeing. That is fairly common across other, other townships we do see, where they'll you know, budget for the use of available fund balance to balance the budget or you know, if they, for, for future capital projects. So from our standpoint, we weren't really alarmed with, with that because we knew. Okay, could, could the township could, could the township in any way say we made a seventy-two thousand dollar profit in our general fund? Would that relate to this at all? If they said they're going to use prior, I don't know if you're referring to like an internal report or the board report. Yeah, probably uh, the unaudited budget performance report. I mean, I know sometimes this ties with when they do their their, their board report, they'll show re revenue expenses and include that revenue number will be the use of prior fund balance they plan to use. That's for, that's fairly common to balance the budget. Mm -hmm. They'll call sometimes they'll call, it, they'll call it appropriate fund balance. That's, yeah. that's probably the most We've common. We've done that for road, uh, the road program for the last two years. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. sometimes too, it's a timing matter with based on when grant money comes in versus when you use it, or if you borrow money when the proceeds come in versus when you use it. Kind of mm -hmm. you know overlap fiscal years. So when you, you may show a large increase the next year, mm -hmm. a large decrease. So yeah. yeah. But it was. It gives us a 25, 30 percent drop in our fund balance for the town. I mean, I think it's it's, just, it's huge. It shouldn't go be passed by. Yeah. So. No, we pass it by. We we did inquire about that. And like I said, the last couple of years, I think it's about two hundred thousand dollars a year. You're set aside. Yeah, we had a um, fund balance policy in December of 2016. Um, and moving forward as a commitment to make sure that every year we ensured that uh, we had a, a sufficient fund balance and that we also designated $100,000 a year for a capital reserve and $200,000 a year to a road reserve. That was our way of slowly getting to mm -hmm. a larger reserve and pool right. of money for projects. Right. So all those years, the past couple years, that money was sitting in the general fund. And this year when you created right. two new capital projects funds that you now see in the audit, the money was moved over. Right. It just moved over. Correct. Do we know what the uh, fund balance 
was in, let's say, beginning of 2016? Um, yeah, sure. Yes, we certainly do. Do you and know we it? Have it? I will have to, oh. yeah. That's really have it. Because I'm guessing if you take the 2000, January 2016 fund balance and you take it at the end of 2018 and you strip out the four, was four, Four million was it in 2018 or 2000? Yes. Yes. 2018. If you take out the four million from the sewer proceeds, you'll still see a net increase in the fund balance, even though you're showing a five hundred thousand dollar loss in 2018 because you had multiple years of financial, I mean, um, surpluses. So I know what you're saying. A big loss in 2018 because we spent a lot more money on roads. But if you look at the previous years. You still have a gain. I'm guessing you still have a gain even after that five hundred thousand dollar loss. Do you follow? I, I, Does that I, make sense? It. Uh, I don't think what's that, happening we is we didn't have a big expenditure on the roads. There, it was. It was. We had a balanced budget almost at the seventy. <coughs> with 70, the seventy two thousand dollar right. profit. Anywhere. But because of all transfers, whether it's related to two thousand and sixteen, whatever, mm. the year end of eighteen. We had a five hundred fifty-six thousand dollar loss Correct. in the general fund. Right. And I think there's without no the transfers from the previous surpluses. Yes, you right. would have a five hundred thousand yes. dollar loss. But in our our accounting, our unaudited or right. financial statements that we put out, we're showing the transfer of surplus to be mm -hmm. used in the, yes. in two thousand eighteen, and that's why you're seeing a difference between theirs and ours. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because we are actually showing funds being transferred from previous year surplus. Yes. We're not spending, we, we didn't, we're not lowering our fund balance. Yeah, but theoretically you have to restate the prior year if you're transferring prior year funds. You're transferring this year funds, you're having the $556,000 loss, and making up for whatever you did in 2016 and 17, I can understand that, but it's, it's a big loss. I, I think, uh, I think the auditor should have addressed it with you. Uh, I don't think he you had a four million dollar profit from the sale of the sewer system, and you have a five hundred thousand dollar loss for the year. It's well, because the way the DCED form works, that four million was also in expenses. We had a ten million dollars exactly. worth of expenses, but we didn't really have ten million dollars of expenses. But the way you have to report it, you have to show his revenue, you have to show his expenses. It throws everything off. Yes. The five hundred thousand. I'm with you on that because that was money transferred from previous surpluses <coughs> and on theirs and not on ours. Right. And that's what caused the difference. Yeah. But again, mm -hmm. as a township, we are still ahead on a surplus over since 2016. I'm guessing. Yes. I'm pretty sure of you. Yes. yes. Yeah. I have a couple questions. Yeah. Before we move on. John makes it sound like the township's doing a horrible job. Is, did you find there's anything alarming or wrong in the radio? No. Is done? Um, is John correct? Should we make adjustments now to satisfy his request? Where is the which is your friend? On our on our unaudited financial statements, should we pull the uh, transfers from previous year surpluses out so it matches your report of five hundred something thousand dollar loss? But what you're doing is not different than what I see across another municipality. They I, I understand, but I know if you want to about. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm not, real, I'm not real familiar with your, your I don't word think, words. I don't think in terms of having unaudited reports, they're unaudited for a reason. You go through these processes, and the audit has to go against certain standards, and that money just had to be. It didn't have the expenses to offset it, and it was well intended to save it over time and to program that money and earn interest and do, do go through those motions. Well, the township didn't lose the money. No, it's double-sided right. because for us to have a balanced budget and we wanted mm -hmm. to spend more on capital programs, we actually had to have right. money put in there from previous surpluses so we could have a balanced budget. If we didn't do that, if we pulled that out, now we don't have a balanced budget and we need to have a balanced budget. So that's, that's why true. the funds are transferred in and you see that line transfer from reserve to balance the budget because we want to spend more money of the surplus that we had in previous years. So it does make sense, but it is a little confusing. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, if you see that and having the questions, absolutely. Working through that, that's why we're here to explain it. 
and, and to have Steve here and to run through it. Because you look at it and think, what does that mean? What is that $10 million in expenses? And the, it has to reflect the township activity, and that is what happened. So. I mean, if you want to send me your internal reports, I'll take a look at it and see if you have a recommendation for doing it better, if you'd like. Certainly. My biggest concern, and I have three other questions yet to this, sure. is John's using the word $500,000 loss, and quite honestly, I bet you half the people in the room are saying, what the hell's going on in the township? Should they be worried? No. If you look at page six of the before any transfers were made, the general fund was $107,000 in the, you know, positive. Mm -hmm. You didn't have, didn't have a loss. It's just when she did move all the money from the general fund to your Correct. capital projects fund, that's when it triggered a loss. And once on paper. Then, right, that's the prior year money being moved over. The other questions I have in no particular order, how are we do, do it? And I wrote this down during Erica's report. Mm -hmm. How are we doing as far as accounting procedures? We do look at it every year. We think top notch. Um, like I said, you have. Excuse a, me, say that again. I missed notch. that. Yeah. Could you say it just a little louder? <laughs> <laughs> top notch. We, we do not have any audit adjustments for the audit. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, the other team that does the day to day transactions within it, you know, year end and empirically through the year, there's another CPA that actually comes in and reviews all the, you know, the quarterly or monthly postings and helps with the year on, you know, close of the books, which, you know, makes our, our audit smooth. Okay. Next and, that, thing. and that's not something that every township does. No, right. Is there any way we should be, <coughs> anything we should be doing or looking to do to improve the township's financial position? Not that I think of at this point. Is there anything that we, you always hear about the township or a government body bragging about their bond rating? Are you familiar with what ours is? It's great. It's great. Is that good or bad? Good. good. Yeah, good. What do we have to do to get it better? And does it help us to get it better? Advertises. <laughs> yeah, it's a healthier fund. Yeah. If you have better rain, then obviously you can borrow money at it. Uh, we don't like borrowing. Cheaper. <laughs> yeah, you don't have much debt left. Yeah, we'll right. Thank you. That's all the questions yeah. I have. Anybody from the audience? <laughs> yes. Nothing was alarming to me. It sounds perfectly, phone, sounds perfectly fine to me. Microphone, please. If you can't hear me, I'm sorry. It sounds perfectly fine to me. Thank you. Just Thank wanted you, to let Carl. you know I think it's good. Carl's related to me, by the way. <laughs> just, just kidding, Carl. <laughs> I wouldn't brag about that, John. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Thank you. Next, we're going to go to new business and voter parking discussion. Um, Attorney, do you want to? Yes. Um, when uh, I arrived here at, uh, I guess, about 6.30 on election day, there were only about two or three spots <coughs> left in the parking lot because all people that were working here. And as time went on, I witnessed over the course of, um, let's say, uh, 15 minutes where three or four cars would come in, they'd circle around, there were no spots left, and people just left. And this happened several times during the course of the day. So I thought to myself, you know, there's a lot of unutilized parking uh, right over here uh, in front of the police station. If there is some way during election day that we can get all the people that are working here to park over there. Uh, then it was further exacerbated by the fact that there was a game going on here at nighttime. And so um, there were a lot of people that you know, brought their kids in to play ball here. And then there was no parking. And once again, I saw, well, I'm going to say 10 people drive around in circles and just leave because there was no parking. So uh, I think we can address that. I, mean, I don't yeah, think there's a reason why we can't have the baseball people park down the lower field right. and walk up and mm -hmm. the workers up there. Makes sense. Exactly. So that's why I asked to yeah, put it on the agenda today so that we can fix it for next election. I like and there's another thing we can do. I mean, these rocks that are out by the driveway, if they're moved over 10 feet, you could get cars parked at you know, an angle on the grass, which isn't the best thing, but burning right for out of parking. I am. Yeah, we're looking to repave the parking lot and look at that possibility. So. Make sure you pull the money from the right account. <laughs> can I speak? So, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, as a, when I was judge, and, and not, um, the, we borrowed the um, sign from the police department, the electronic sign that tells people 
voting only park to, you know, where they, they should be parking. And then the workers should be told ahead of time by the individual parties and, and not, they should be parking over there. And it really does clear things up. The, the time to have this discussion is a week before, two weeks before the I'm election. Not the <laughs> <laughs> but we always do it the week after. You know what, Bernie? I totally agree with you. And I have, for the past six years that I've worked this poll, have asked, have asked the parties to please move their cars and utilize the lower lot, walk in, park up on the grass because it, it has been, it's not a new problem, it's an old problem. And unfortunately, it is the people that are manning the booths outside, people that are inside that are refusing to do it. So I don't know how the township can fix that, but we need to work together. We need to allow voters to vote. And, and we're totally shooting ourselves in the foot with that. Thank you for bringing it up. Thank you. So if it doesn't work next year, his name's Bernie Corp. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to wear a police hat in the Billy Club. There you go. <laughs> yes, Brian. I can add something to that. Uh, I've gone through voter services training a number of times, and one of the things that they've mentioned is that the landlord can set the conditions that they want. Literally, the landlord could be upset with all the campaign workers and say, you're all leaving and getting off of our property. There's places where they've been across the street because the landlord or they had certain problems with voter sir or the election officials talked to them and they moved them off the property. It's a harsh way to do it. I agree with you. Putting them up in the upper lot where it's where it's empty for the entire day is a good thing. Uh, concerning the rocks, I can remember when the rocks were not there. They showed up one time. And about two years ago, Tammy Swavely made the statement that they're required to protect the integrity of the pond. I never did a right to know to find out what document claims that they need to protect the integrity of the pond. But it might be something to go and, you know, just look at, as John said, move them back a certain number of feet so you can park more people. We're seeing it even tonight with people circling around, having difficulty parking, and it happens regularly during the summertime when you've got the sports teams there as well as have a township meeting. Thank you for, again, Bernie, thank you for bringing it up. Sure. Um, I just put one further question. Sure. Is there sufficient parking over in the park itself off of? Um, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. You have to walk parking. further. No. You have to walk further, but there is sufficient parking, so, okay. Thank you. Any other comments from the audience? <clears throat> Peter. <laughs> Tonight, the, 10 minutes before 7, there were a grand total of three people in here, and I couldn't even find a parking spot. Right. Can't we just ban the sports people from this parking lot? We, we did ask them that in Parks and Rec when they came in to ask to use the baseball field. Mm -hmm. That was one of my things that I asked in Parks and Rec and said, you know, first and third Monday, you can't vote, you can't park in the lot. You're feeling, we've got a parking lot up there. We have a parking lot down here. A lot of those residents are also residents of the township. I'm just being the, the alternate argument. Also, there's this meeting happens twice a month. There's baseball games and it might happen five days a week. So you're banning it, but uh, it, there's gotta be a better solution. I think increasing the parking will help. It may not be the 100% solution, but we gotta try that first. Don't you think? Oh, yeah. 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 They agreed to not park there. Excuse me, Miss, if you wanna use the <laughs> microphone, it's <tell me. laughs> <laughs> Uh, can't we have the police put up temporary restricted parking there and then ticket people that don't listen to it? They can do that if they could identify the cars that don't belong. That don't belong. Um, it's, I don't think you're going to find a 100% solution yeah. here, but anything, even 10 car spots would help dramatically. Talk to the chief. There still might be a deterrent. Yes, because right. they don't know that we and don't signs, know. you know, or put their, know. Their, their electronic <laughs> sign here, no <laughs> baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so maybe another easy fix on this, if we can um, 
maybe put up uh, uh, just uh, painted stalls over in the in front of the police department there, which would allow us to just you know easily park there and be most efficient in that parking rather than have yeah, to talk, talk to the chief. I'm sure they have their own ideas as yeah. far as a fist when they have to exit the office. Every day. <coughs> They're going to be looking out for. Yeah, that's true. Talk to them. Yeah. I, David Brown used to park over there all the time. Yeah. Okay. So there's some great sums parking. Anyway, okay. thank you. I don't think we're going to solve that one tonight, but let's try. Next item is a request for approval of the purchase mower head for, um, for a boom mower. I move to approve the request to purchase a mower head for the 2010 boom mower for $14,707. I'll second the motion. Um, Erica, you want to explain what this is? Sure. Um, <clears throat> our 2010 Tiger Boom mower uh, mower head uh, is in very bad shape. Uh, the cutter drum is cracked. The head is fatigued. It's also cracking. Um, so it's actually a hazard because it's a very large arm that's taking care of a lot of issues in the township. Um, the proposal is to replace the entire mower head assembly. Uh, we have here the recent service history, it's just service, service, service. Um, so it's really becoming an issue. Uh, we do um, have a, a co-star state contract price of this $14,707. Um, our roadmasters here this evening, in case there's any questions, or want to attest to the need for uh, the replacement. So, thank you. Reggie, you were here for, for this? Um, in the past, I've seen a, 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 an expensive invoice before your time regarding blades for this thing. I assume that this has a lot of different blades on it that screw together or somehow. Um, is there any use in, in cannibalizing these for parts in the future? I can save everything. Great. Um, Jane, did you have a question? No, I do. <laughs> Yes. So is there a, I just have a question on that, that arm that goes up. Is there a limit to what it's reasonably able to cut? Because like last year I really noticed that they were like hitting trees with it. And I, you know, it's just like, is it really meant to do that? Because you know, we're, we're talking some pretty decent branching. Yeah, so there's different knives you put on it. Some will cut decent sized wood and some are just for grass. Okay. And they have the right ones on, and it's just, okay, thank you. Just made to do that. All right, just one Brian, is this the old mower or the newer mower? Newer. Okay, newer, that's it, thank you. Actually, what's the condition of the head on the older mower then? Reggie, you know that? That's a different type of mower. Yeah. Okay. That's why it just lays down over the side of the road. It's just, okay. just a push hog, basically. Any other questions? Any discussion amongst us, gentlemen? No, good. Okay, no. we're going to call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is Pam Brown here? I am. How did I know that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know that. Next, we have the uh, French and Picker. Uh, Creeks Trust request for 2019 operating contribution. Bernie, can you make this one? <coughs> sure. I'd like to move to the I'm sorry. I, I made the, the motion to approve the $7,500 donation to French and Pickering Creeks Conservation Trust. I'll I'll second. Yeah. I'm not going to vote for it, but I second it. It's a surprise, man. Any comments from the audience? Seeing now, I'll call for vote. All those in favor? Aye. aye. You said aye? No, I didn't say aye. That was two ayes and one nay. Everybody does understand why I vote no to these charitable contributions, correct? No, tell us, please. No. Um, I don't think it's right for other people to decide a charity for other people. So when we go and <coughs> vote to give money to different organizations, we are making the decision of charity. And in my mind, charity is a personal and a voluntary act, not a forced act. And this is a forced act, forcing all our residents to donate to a certain charity. 
And I just can't do that. As a, I just can't make those decisions for everybody. But it's nothing against Friends and Family. Oh, God, no. I've donated to the library Iron Tour in the past. But that's on a personal level. I don't think government should be involved in it. Any questions? Because you never know what three people are going to be sitting here and what charities they're going to decide. We all agree that these are good charities, but does, it all depends on who's sitting here. That could so be spending. I got two. Explanation. Okay, so we're going to move on then, right? Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Next, uh, oh, thank you, Pam. Um, next, we have the Agriculture Security, the ASA application for Christopher and Christine McGowan on Flowing Springs Road. Erica, you want to? Yeah, sure. Um, from time to time, um, well, we do a update required by the Agricultural Security Area Law for seven years. Um, every seven years we have to go through a process of updating um, our security area. Um, but we do get applications from time to time. This is for, um, as you say, Christopher and Christine Gallon for 2127 Long Springs Road. Um, they have a 13.6 acre property. Um, they had gone to Chester County. Uh, regarding an agricultural easement, um, conservation easement, and uh, we're advised they must go through this process. This is acknowledging the receipt of the application, um, and by law we have to go through a step-by-step -step process to review um, and consider this application. One of the steps is moving forward here. Uh, we have 15, 15 days to post that we have the application on file. Um, I do need to reach out to them um, for uh, a map and uh, I think it was some additional information, but um, this was sent certified mail and we'll go through the process. Um, the Planning Commission and the Agricultural Security Area Committee <coughs> have to convene and uh, review the application. Um, when you're included in this um, ASA area, uh, there's eligibility, we have to look at that, uh, but the benefits are you're protected by nuisance ordinances and the like within your uh, municipal borders and as well as eminent domain. So, um, if there's any questions, please let me know. But we'll we'll acknowledge uh, if you'd like to acknowledge, and we'll move forward with that process. Any questions from the audience? Do we have to take a vote to approve, or we just that's all we acknowledge? No, no, we just acknowledge. You don't do anything. That's so acknowledged. Thank you. Oh, here comes. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> you can quit too. Yeah, I'm sure I can. I don't have to move. No, you don't have to move. I make the motion to accept the letter of resignation from John Jacobs, Chairman, Board of Supervisors. I second that motion. <laughs> I don't think I'll have count. And if I don't, then you can't resign. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to leave me all alone with Mike? <laughs> Mike sucks. <laughs> I did drives. Okay. I'll be out of the township, and, and I don't think that would be the right way to go. I'll second the motion. Okay. Um, just so if anybody has any questions, it has been my pleasure to be here. I, it's a thankless job, but the township residents, and particularly a lot of the staff, have made my stay here very, very nice. And and uh, have helped in many different ways that you as residents may or may not see. So, and the committee levels, um, committees have a lot more people working on them now than they used to, and that's, I think, a very good thing for the township. Anyway, the purpose of this is my wife and I have found a house just across the border. It took us a long time to find one just across the border. Um, <laughs> it's in Elverson, and, um, and we have to be a resident to be a supervisor. So our moving company is moving us from the apartments up here by the uh, corner uh, next Tuesday. So it was Monday. appropriate. Monday? <laughs> Monday. Get out of bed. Anyway. Um, see, i got to put up with here and at home. <laughs> anyway. So that's the reason for that. So thank you all very, very much. I appreciate your support over the last five and a half years. And yours too, Joe. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was the motion. So. Okay, so now we need a vote. We need a vote for comments. Comment. Comment. Uh, comments. I just personally want to say thank you, John. 
You're welcome, Jane. The meetings alone are so much more civil than they used to be, and I think everything has just changed so much for the better, and I think that was led by your lead. So yeah, thank you. Almost fun to come to these, aren't they? I know. <laughs> There's no shouting and screaming anymore. <laughs> Suzanne Roth. I also want to add my thanks. Um, you've been terrific. We're going to miss you a lot. You've really added a tremendous amount to our township. And I hope you'll come back and add some comments every once in a while. Even though you're not a township resident, you might be able to give us some hints. Um, Carl's going to save me a seat right next to him. <laughs> Here it is. Thank you, John. It's been, it's been so wonderful to have you with us, and we're going to miss you immensely. Thank you. I'm blushing in case you can't tell. <laughs> and i got to be the third person to say thanks. Um, the audit meeting is the perfect time for me to say what a difference in the 15 years that I've been coming to these meetings. And you'll be gone, but like you guys have some shoes to fill and keep it the way that it is now. It's absolutely amazing. I tell you, you, we'll you. you may we'll not see this, but the, this, these guys have worked really, really well together and the, the, the three of us are, and Erica too. That's what we see. And, and that's what has to say. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Brian. I'm going to add uh, to that that um, one of the big things that I've seen is that we can get answers from the board and they're answers that are believable, that we're not being stonewalled. <laughs> uh, I have, you know, road work. We actually have a road plan that's, I'm going to use the word that I kind of cringe at, it's proactive as opposed to being reactive. We have actual work, work being done with plans as opposed to going out and starting on it and rolling on through. And on a staff basis, one of the big changes that I've, or actually two big changes, one is if I put in a right to know, I frequently get an answer back within five days as opposed to being delayed for 30 days. And the other thing is, I can put in questions before a meeting. I can get answers back from Erica, just like John can put in questions. He gets answers back. He may go and raise some questions in the meeting, but the staff knows what's coming, and we get answers, which is really, really nice. Thank you for the work uh, that you've done, the rest of you, too. Thank you, Brian. I'm still blushing, by the way. John, uh, having sat in that seat, I just wanted to say it. You've done a nice job you know, with the civility and, and working with everyone, whether there's agreement or disagreement. And putting up with me, I know, is not easy to do. But in, ultimately, you've done a good job, and thank you for that. And good luck and good, you know, good you know, endeavor. It's a two-way street. i got to tell you, we haven't had many conflicts because, you know, you're allowed to disagree. And we all seem to know that, you know. And that's the way to be. That's, that's, thank you, Carl. Thank you. Okay. Enough of that stuff, all right? So can we move on? Okay. Let's go. Do you have to vote? You don't even, we already voted, do we? No, no. All those in favor, tie. Okay. <laughs> okay, now what do we do? And since I'm not here anymore, can I, can I sit here or do I have to go to the big audience? You can sit there. Um, the next. Order of business is resolution 15-2019. Resolution 15-2019 of the Board of Supervisors of the Township, acknowledging the years of service to the Township by John Jacobs. Whereas John Jacobs has served on the Board of Supervisors for five years and five months, having served from January 6, 2014 through June 3, 2019. And whereas John Jacobs has served as chairman of the Board of Supervisors since January 4, 2016. And whereas John Jacobs has served as township representative on the Phoenix Oil Regional Comprehensive Planning Committee, as well as a liaison to numerous community committees and commissions. And whereas John Jacobs often gave personal time and services above and beyond the ordinary to the township in his efforts to enhance the overall operations of West Vincent Township, whereas the Board of Supervisors desire to acknowledge John Jacobs' years of service to the township and desire to give recognition to him for his devoted and distinguished service. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Board of Supervisors of this township 
that the years of dedicated service by John Jacobs to Westminster Township is hereby acknowledged with appreciation not only by the Board of Supervisors, but Westminster Township staff and the Township community as whole. And be it further resolved that a certified copy of this resolution be presented to John Jacobs as further expression of appreciation of the Board of Supervisors. Duly adopted this third day of June 2019 by the Board of Supervisors of Westminster Township, Chester County, Pennsylvania, in lawful ses session, duly assembled. We have a ruling. We have something for you, John. First off, can I make a comment? That was the most painful three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for leaving. It's if you stay, you wouldn't have to do that. Man. In addition to the resolution, we have a um, a plaque here, uh, John Jacobs, in recognition appreciation of your dedicated service. As a uh, member and chairman of the town of West was the town report of supervisors. So please put this in your new house. <laughs> I, I can assure you. Thank you again. Enough of that. Let's, 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 Would you make the motion okay. for that resolution? Yes, I did. I'll uh, second that motion. Uh, any comments? Okay. Grateful. Vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The next, next uh, order of business is resignation uh, from Open Space Review Board, George Pacinos. Um, I'll make a motion um, to accept the resignation of George Lucinos as a member of the Open Space Review Board. I'll second that. Uh, discussion? Discussion. Um, you know, George's intent of uh, resigning is in anticipation of being the interim supervisor, correct? And we need to uh, at least agree first that we're going to vote for George. Vote George in before he resigns. I would put that in opposite uh, order. Yeah, sure. That's true. Yeah, Probably sorry. should have been in opposite order. Yeah. Okay. So, let's go in opposite. We'll Check just table that. So we can just don't, don't second that. If your or did I second clear it? On your next motion, then we don't know until we make the motion. Correct. Exactly. Right. So now we'll <coughs> Resend that. Yeah, rescind the motion. Okay, I rescind the previous motion. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next order of business. I make the motion to approve the appointment of George Chinas as Board of Supervisor Member. I'll second the motion. Any comments? Okay. I would just ask. Would you consider not appointing Mr. Del Chino uh, to the, this temporary position and consider someone who's not running for the office? Uh, I'm just concerned that there is a, it presents the wrong image to the residents that you're picking one over the other, whereas perhaps if you would canvass the previous supervisors or other members of the community, instead of, this doesn't look quite right. That's why I just wanted to point that out, that it would, I think it would be better if you didn't do that. I, I just don't think it's, I, I don't think it's ethical. I don't, I don't think it's the right way to go. It doesn't send the right message to the community that you're, a neutral, bipartisan effort, I think, is a better way to go. Not, not picking so, one of the candidates. So you want us to pick somebody that doesn't go to meetings, I, I don't understand where we'd be picking from. I would suggest you you canvass the previous supervisors. Why would we? Uh, I'll, if, I'd be happy to do the job. I'm just saying someone who has experience, ready to go. Well, I didn't have experience when I started. John didn't have experience when he started. Right. It's perfectly fine. It's, as long as they're good people and they have a good head on the shoulder, it's a perfectly legitimate thing. It's the same as any election. The people running are not previous supervisors and running 
So I don't see it. Have this before the primary? Before anyone was on, anyone was running? It would have been the same thing. No, George no. was the second, you know, ran against Bernie in the last election. Fine. He, what I'm saying is you're in an election cycle now. Yeah, it sucks. I agree. Right. So it doesn't have to be this way. I'm trying to. But if we put, why would we put somebody that we don't want on the board? Somebody that you don't want. That we don't want or we don't know. I mean, it's just like throwing a dart. I don't know. Okay. Well, that speaks even further that that's you're setting things up, you're up to something, you want it to be a representative of the community. And exactly. rather than having someone and George running. And George ran on the last election to be a supervisor, so he has the, the want and will to do it, and he goes to all the meetings. Sure. He's on the planning commission, he's, he's, he's done all this. So and I am also, also running who's equally qualified. That's my point, you're typically Okay, but yeah, and you're right, I agree with that. Right. And Sarah would be the next pick. But okay. this is a Republican seat. Right. That we're replacing. I'm She's a Democrat. So I mean, I'm doesn't look at it. I'm more qualified than anybody in the room. Just no, you say you're more qualified. I, I am. don't I know if I agree with that. I, well, I'm just, my point, Mike, is that your criteria is obviously political, and I'm trying to help depoliticize. <coughs> That's all I'm trying to do is help depoliticize this so that there's no nothing attached to this. But I don't know how to do that. It's easy. What? Appoint you? Don't appoint the candidate. I'll do it if you want. You can appoint anybody. Pick anybody else, but don't appoint a candidate. Joe, do you see an ethical issue here? Yeah. So, care, care to elaborate, Joe? Yeah. No. Ethical no. issue? Okay, any other comments? Uh, yeah, actually, there are other people's audience that may be interested in the about the position being offered. Or well, if, you, if the other people in the audience were um, interested in the position, they would have ran for the office. That's what I'm getting at. Well, perhaps there's some people that would not run because of other reasons, but would be in a position to take a temporary position. <clears throat> well, that, that doesn't seem all in. Reason. That doesn't seem all in. I'll sit here for a couple months because I can. But they're not willing to put in the time and the effort to actually sit here for six years. And I don't blame them. Believe me. <laughs> well, <laughs> but it's really common kind of effort in the circumstances as well. For example, some people want their retirement home. Maybe you're looking at one. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. But I, I have the same feelings that uh, Carl has. Okay. It seems to be inappropriate and rather unfair yeah. to select one candidate over another in an in a interim position like this for, for the great position they're running for. I understand. That seems to and be I, almost unethical. If there, was, if, there was, if there was two Republicans in this room, I would tend to agree with you. But this is a Republican seat, so it should be filled by a Republican, in my opinion. Okay, but or there's not two. Or how about a nonpartisan, independent person? No, I don't know. Is there, is there a seat here that's nonpartisan? I don't think so. Well, it's Republican or Democrat here. It could be Libertarian or it could be whatever, but in this case, it's a Republican seat. And George is the correct person to do it. He's but the one that's been working hard at becoming a supervisor. I like George. I have nothing against George. Okay. Well, then we're friends, right, George? <laughs> Still. Yeah. But it's, it's the perception, I think, that Carl's a great I understand the perception, and it sucks that it's there. I agree. It probably sucks for George more than anybody. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Any other comments? Let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. No, yes, it has to go backwards. Okay. I made the motion to accept the resignation of George Blachinos as a member of the Open Space Review Board. I second that. Any comments? Sarah? Is he also resigning from the planning commission? Not at this time until we can find a placement, is that correct? Uh, you know, actually, as a, um, as a member of the Board of Supervisors for a second class township code in our ordinance for the planning commission, you need to make sure out of your seven appointed members, five are citizen members, which means you cannot uh, hold in the elected office. But uh, those two members, at least if you have two, um, George representing that, he can serve in both capacities. Okay, but we're going to actively look for another 
for open space. And, for, and well, that planning. was up to you. Well, I mean, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, we didn't do that. Right. Any other comments? George? Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you. It's a, uh, it's a great responsibility, and um, it's an honor to um, follow John and uh, look at the long term. One thing I've learned from John is that all the decisions you got to look at the long term impact on the township. You can't just keep your eyes right on the road in front of you. And uh, that's something that I'm you know, very much uh, attuned to. I've seen it not done, and I'd like to see it. Uh, happen. I'll let you on in the future, but <clears throat> excuse me. As far as the uh, open space, I definitely am, you know, obviously resigning from that. Planning, I intend to resign. The only reason I'm going to stay on is for continuity until we find someone else, but I have no uh, plans to keep both positions. So, as soon as you can, uh, you know, as soon as we can locate someone, I'd be happy to resign from that too. Okay. Um, Thanks. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Thank you. Any others? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now it's back to Merle. The next is public comment, comment on non agenda items. Yes. Okay. I'm talk from here because I'm loud. Really quickly, I'd like to thank Erica for arranging for an emergency patch job of Hollow Road prior to the Iron Tour. The potholes in that road were so dangerous, we really felt that people could get seriously injured, and the response was almost immediate. The road crew did a great job, and I just wanted to thank you on behalf of Reggie Pickering. Excellent. Reggie, did you have anything to do with that? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Some elves did it. <laughs> oh, he's just modest. Brian, you have a comment? Something I noticed the other day coming down, um, or let's see, yes, it would be going south on, on St. Matthews, that the um, roof, the tin, tin roof, I think it's uh, zinc plated corrugated sheets on the other side, the side away from us, there's a lot of rust there. Here on this side, you still have a little bit of zinc left on it, but if that roof is not coated, painted, uh, repaired in some ways is going to be a real major repair. And once the zinc goes away, the corrosion rate of the metal increases a bunch. So that's something that really should be looked at, okay. you know, with, you know, on a, on a fairly short term basis, in are my opinion. Talking about okay. this okay. Roof? What's that again? What, what roof are you talking about? This one? Thank that you. one right there. Thank you. That was the one I could see. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We're getting You are? Okay. Yeah. Good. Any other comments? Yeah. Then. Um, Suzanne Roth. I've noticed in driving around that there are a lot of dead trees on the side of the road that have not come down of their own volition yet. But they will. <laughs> And I don't know if we can be proactive about that because, God forbid, the tree should fall while somebody's driving by or standing there. Agreed. And there are bunches of them. So um, I just wanted to bring that to your attention in case no one has noticed. Um, and so please. Do you know which roads? There's you know? well, there, there's one on um, there's one on Flowing Springs going down that's on the edge of. Uh, it's as you approach Hollow Road on the left-hand side, there's one on Flowing Springs at the top. As you as you turn off St. Matthew's, turn right to go down in the village, there's one very dead one, right smack on the road there that's just a heartbeat away. And since I listened last night to something fall in my woods one more time, I mean, I know that this is just, with, with the high winds and the rains, it's, 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 a, it's a disaster waiting to happen. If you want me to, I'll make notes of what I see, and I think we should just ask everybody, I think everybody if we yeah. to really look right. around, maybe make a little report in the in our mm -hmm. our uh, neighborhood newspaper if they see trees that are on the road that are, need to be filled. They should be, even if you just take them down to the point where they're not dangerous. I agree with you. Can put that out on like. Facebook. Or, sure, yeah. sure. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, 
I know that Erica mentioned that we need volunteers for um, the festival this weekend. We really do. We have a couple of slots, one to two hour slots that you can you know jump in and jump out and um, <coughs> get to really interact with some of our residents while you're doing that. Would be really great. So if anyone would like to volunteer, please see me so I can grab your name real quick. But we have a, a, a few little little jobs that aren't going to be fun jobs. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Any other comments? Oh, you make the motion? Oh, I meant the motion to adjourn. <laughs> Did I lose this? <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all for coming. That's lucky. Joe, where you going?